The bond between humans and their dogs is undeniably strong. Dogs have been genetically modified over thousands of years for our own purposes, but new research suggests that this bond is actually much deeper than we initially thought. Recent legislation has sought to isolate certain so-called pit bull type breeds, but why would any modern suburban dog owner own a dog that's ever been bred for violence? <coughs> Why would they have them? Um, I don't I, I don't get it um, when there are so many other varieties of dogs. Why do people have you know, poodles and why do you have cats? I, there's, it's, everyone has different likes and if we all had the same thing in life it would be pretty sad. What does my dog say about me? Um, it says well, <laughs> um, I don't know how to answer that. He got me nicely <laughs> there. Yeah. These dog owners are under the spell of a hormone called oxytocin. Research suggests that the love that people have for their dogs is not too different to the love that humans have for their children. A maternal, connective bond which makes us protective of them, but also blinds us with love when it comes to their potential faults. We've done some work looking at the difference of owner perceptions of their dog versus expert ratings of them and owners definitely view their own animals much more positively than an outsider might. But then that's their experience of their dog because probably with them their dog is loving and is around babies and is in its own home environment. In fact, some research suggests that domesticated dogs function with the social cognitive skills of a young child, especially through eye contact. And both dogs and humans who experience trauma or mistreatment during their early years can suffer developmental effects that limit their ability to produce oxytocin and therefore bond with others. Most dogs um, will become aggressive primarily because they haven't had uh, an appropriate upbringing, they haven't been socialised thoroughly. And often aggression is a fear response in the animal to the unknown. The, the key predictor of aggressive behaviour in dogs, number one is a poor early period in their life, so between eight weeks and 16 weeks of age. Um, that's a period of time when the dog is uh, the dog's most formative. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever sworn in front of a two-year-old and that two-year-old goes around repeating that one terrible word for the next three weeks. That's what a puppy's like. And there lies the contradiction that oxytocin may create. Owning a dog for protection, like a weapon, and owning a dog for an emotional connection, like with a child, in the wrong environment can be deadly. But the reason why some may get these certain breeds in the first place is status. Now there are certain parts of the community that may specifically want that behaviour. For instance, if they're wanting a status dog that someone else tries to approach and it arcs up and it gives them real good street cred. You sometimes see people walking around the suburbs with these dogs, um, you know, and they'll have their dog on the display and they'll have their tattoos on display. It's a bit about a show of force and intimidation. We've gone through cycles over history where the German Shepherd was, you know, like the Bete Noir because they might interbreed with dingoes and, oh my God, we've got the ultimate sheep killer, you know. Then Dobermans weren't popular, Rottweilers weren't popular. Now it's pit bull terriers are, you know, Satan personified. So how are dogs responsibly trained for violent situations? Chris Kotsopoulos is a leading supplier of bloodlines for police and security use. We have community that just buy a dog because they want a good stable pet. We have people who buy dogs because they want a little bit more protection. Then we have um, law enforcement departments all over the country that buy our dogs because of the way they're genetically geared and they're naturally gifted to perform this way. Remember these dogs have to be jumping out of helicopters, chasing offenders, then be normal in a family, take a tremendous amount of physical pressure under abuse. But to him, it's not aggression. There's a bit of an obligation in owning a dog. You know, you can't just palm it off. You, it's, I don't see it any different to a child in that is a responsibility. So everything you do as an owner matters. The thing is, we don't teach our people enough on how to handle these dogs appropriately, regardless of what dog you have. We very much create the, the dogs that we're going to own. Any dog, just like every other dog, is just a reflection of their owner. So I believe in uh, responsible ownership and that way you raise a good, good dog and yeah, you've got to do it right from the start. So what do we see in our dogs? Do we see a child, a weapon 
or a status symbol. Maybe in those big brown eyes we see a true reflection of ourselves, a very human emotional contradiction.